So what's happening at the meeting is the use of various community marking to regional for the council to meet with the deputy regional minister who through motor accident knocked and killed our brother. We lost him this afternoon and we see him and our mission was simple. We want our brother back. And the fact that Honorable Deputy Regional Minister is still roaming without being arrested and put behind bars is something that is worrying us. Because we don't understand why in Ghana the laws appear to be like the spider that mm. catches only the smaller insects. But for the bigger ones, they can easily pass through. We don't understand. If there were an ordinary person that had done this genius crime, but now the fellow should have been behind bars. Why is Honorable Deputy Regional Minister of South Africa still roaming and dining and whining? We don't understand. That's mm. what we say. Unfortunately, we did not meet him himself, but we stated our mission to the police and the Minister Chief Executive of Balkatanga. Right. So you had the uh, right. mm. uh, Balkatanga Municipal Police Commander here. And since you were talking about the arrest of the deputy minister, what did the police uh, commander say in response to this? The commander told us that uh, efforts are underway to effect this arrest. Uh, they agree with us that there is no, you know, nobody is above the law. We are all equal for the law. But we have a difficulty because if they know that all of us are equal before the law, they should have effected the arrest even before our agitation. So that really dragged the, the meeting to where we now finally ended. Yeah. So you don't know if they are arresting him or not? The, the police was not categorical? The, 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 the police were not specific. Even the chief of our community mm. wanted the, 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 the police to be specific. The time that his arrest was effected. And we, the you also even asked the, the police that we are responsible citizens who could assist them, arrest um, the deputy regional minister if they have the difficulty doing so. And from the look of things, the police are not interested. And we are going back to hold a meeting this evening, okay. and we will communicate to you. So you don't know for now what your next line of action will be? It will, we will get our next line of action in this evening's meeting. Right. So, so I'm sorry. Uh, quickly, uh, thanks for putting that gentleman on, on the telephone. Now, the impression we get is that they, they're asking for their dead brother back. This is not possible. So really, there yeah. must be other, other, other reliefs that they're, they're, they're asking, which includes the, wanting the police to arrest the, the deputy minister. Have you engaged the police on this uh, by any chance? Well, the municipal police commander... Um, was, was very uh, brief in his responses to the, uh, the, the demands the youths were making. Um, Superintendent... Yeah, I'm listening, uh, Albert. Yeah, and uh, he told them that he will, you know, work with his men and they will ensure that justice is done according okay. to the law. However, he was not specific as to exactly what he and his men were going to do. Uh, he didn't state if they will arrest the minister and when they were going to do that. Right. Now, Robert's brother claimed, and I quote, when we got him and asked why he was running away after the incident, he told us he thought it was a donkey he knocked. So, Abed, sorry, yeah. this donkey issue, uh, uh, how far have you probed the issue of the deputy minister claiming that he thought he had knocked a donkey? To speak to the deputy minister, uh, when I visited the, you know, the minister went to the hospital this morning to visit the victim. Mm. That was after the youth had uh, come to his office in the morning. Mm. Um, I went there myself. I saw the minister. And when he had finished the visit and was leaving, I tried to speak to him. And all he said was, his PRO got to me and, uh, you know, said the minister wanted to speak to us. I got here. And we were told that he was in a meeting. Since then, we've not heard from him. Right. So, so he, he has not specifically responded to uh, this particular issue. But those are uh, the, these. Uh, the, that was what uh, the, the the brother of Robert and the eyewitness who actually uh, facilitated his arrest yesterday right. uh, told us that when they met him and confronted him, he said he had he didn't know that he had knocked down uh, a human being. 
uh, he thought it, it was a donkey. And right. they, they also allegedly said that uh, he said that he was he was drunk. Right. Uh, so typically, yeah. when people knock donkeys in the Upper East region or in the Northern sector, generally, uh, how do they be respond? Do they just drive off? Or they they stop to interrogate and find out which donkey was that. I mean, what is what is normal in the Upper East region? Oh, well, I, I think that uh, it depends on the in individual. Mm. Um, donkeys are very uh, expensive animals, yeah. so um, a lot of people who know this, when when they mistakenly hit someone's donkey, would stop and yeah. uh, maybe get to the owners. And if they have to pay for it, they do that. If they can, uh, between they and the owner of the donkey, understand themselves, yeah. uh, you know, they do that. So typically, but I mean, yeah. also choose to, uh, to you know, run. drive away because okay. it's an animal. So right. it depends on the individual. So typically, I mean, there's a greater chance that if uh, the, the deputy minister was conscious of knocking a donkey, uh, by courtesy, it would have stopped, right, to engage the owners of this donkey, whatever it was. Ah. There would well, have been a greater I think chance. So. Uh, okay. Even though I can't tell that. All right. I don't uh, want to push you, Albert. I'm grateful for your time on today's big story. Right. My name is Stephen Antti. We'll take a break, and when we return, we'll go to the issue in.